Yeah, that sounds about right. We have a problem. It is so good to meet you. Calm yourself. There is something I want to give you. Who are you? Sorry, it's a different keyboard than I'm used. There you go. I'm Sven. Um, Great name. So, uh, we're in character creation. I can select uh, my background. Uh, so these are all the Dungeons and Dragons backgrounds that you know, if you play Dungeons and Dragons. I can change my body type, I can change my race, so I can play as a tiefling, I can play as a drow, I can play as a human, I can play as a good Yankee, I can play as a dwarf, I can play as an elf, I can play as a half-elf, I can play as a half-drow, I can play as a halfling. And uh, there's more, but we're only showing a few. Uh, these are the races that will be going into early access, and there are more will be added afterwards. And so depending on which race I pick, I get different features. Uh, I can also select which class I'm going to play. We have six classes that will be available on early access from the get-go, and then we'll just add more as we, pro we progress. Um, uh, so I can play as a wizard, cleric, uh, fighter, uh, ranger, rogue, and warlock, and then I can pick uh, the abilities, uh, ability points that go with that and select my skills in which I'm going to be proficient. Today we're going to play an origin story, so we have different origin stories. Uh, there's going to be five that are going to be in early access, there will be more after. Uh, so this is Lysel, she's the girl you saw in the intro, so she is a Git Yankee. Uh, Gale is a wizard, uh, he has a very big problem, and that's pretty much that he's going to explode. Um, Shadowheart, she's a uh, dark cleric, uh, so she's got quite a story too. Will is a monster hunter who made a pact with the devil, he regrets it. Um, and today we're going to play as Astarian, who is a vampire spawn. Uh, he's a noble, uh, so vampire spawn is not really a vampire, he has a vampire, a vampire to which he is a slave. Uh, he's a high elf, which means that we get to select a cantrip for him. So we're going to pick Mage Hand because we're going to do cool things with it. And all the rest is already preset for him, so we just have to click the Venture Forth button and we can continue our adventure.
So we're going to skip the tutorial uh, because it's not ready yet. Uh, and so I'll tell you what happens in the tutorial, or at least in a nutshell. Uh, we're going to capture that Nautiloid. We're going to uh, do that together with the Git Yankee uh, warrior that you saw captured in the intro. And uh, we're going to teleport it to a place called Faerun, uh, more specifically to the Sword Coast, more specifically 200 miles to the east of uh, Baldur's Gate. That was, by the way, the city that you saw destroyed. It's not Baldur's Gate, it was Yartar. <laughs> Goodbye, Yartar. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. Daylight. It can't be. What the hell is going on? So what I forgot to mention is that my vampire spawn normally can't walk in the sunlight. He can't go over running water and he needs an invitation if he wants to enter somewhere. Uh, but apparently he can walk in the sunlight, so that's kind of handy for us. Um, so he's going to try to figure out what's going on. So uh, I can control the camera and put it in third person. Uh, so then it's running behind me. Or I can just go back top down and then basically play it in a you know, traditional manner. So I'm going to like going like this and let's look at what we can find. Have a look over there. The sunlight. So this is a, a river, it's called the Kayontar. Better not push my luck. And it reaches all the way to Baldur's Gate, but we have no boat, so we're gonna have to go in a different direction. Uh, obviously you can see that it's been a lot of fun over here. Mangled Fisher, yeah, the little letter. Perfectly good blood. Um, the love letter is none of my business. So. Was the sky always this blue? It's magnificent. Starin doesn't really care about the fact that everybody's dead. Uh, Apple. She is banging at that door, so let's go ask and introduce ourselves. Blasted doors! I. What? Oh. It's you. I saw you on the ship. You survived then. Suddenly I saw what she saw, felt what she felt. Anger, confusion, resolve. Ah! You. You've got the same thing I do. In your head. I felt it. Okay, so I have a whole bunch of dialogue options. Uh, so what just happened to us is because of the tadpole. I was already introduced to that in the tutorial. We call it mind melding. Uh, so we both have a tadpole in our head and uh, we can telepathically uh, connect to each other. Uh, but I'm also very hungry. So I'm playing this from the point of view of Astarin, vampire spawn. Uh, so you will see that all of my choices will be tailored to uh, being Astarin, essentially. So I'm going to stare at her and realize that I'm very hungry. What's the matter with you? Has that tadpole scrambled your brain already? So I can basically say, okay, well, I'll just uh, feed, uh, or uh, I can swallow my urge and find ignorance, which is what I'm going to do because I uh, need a companion. Come on. The chase through hell, the creatures, what they did to us, the tadpole, that thing is going to consume us from the inside and turn us into mind flayers. You and I need a healer. Finding one won't be easy in this wilderness. We'll need supplies. I'm hoping something of use might be behind these doors. But I've barely made a dent in them so far. Okay, so I can offer to help her, but I'm a rogue also, so I can tell her to save her strength, then that I'll pick the lock. By all means. I'm going to see what's at the top of this cliff. Hopefully there's no more of these creatures along the way. Uh, I uh, will... Well, actually, I'll suggest that we join forces and say that that gives us better also of survival. Or just company for our final moments. But you're right. Whatever lies ahead will be a little less daunting with support. You can call me Shadowheart. Uh, I can tell her that I'm a star in a reformed vampire spawn who can walk in the sunlight uh, or can uh, choose not to tell her, which is a good idea. Uh, and uh, I can also question her what she knows about the things in each of our heads. Very little. Supposedly, those monsters breed by planting their tadpoles in people's heads. Over time, the infected victim turns into a mind flare. I don't remember how long it takes, but we should hurry. So that's a problem. I'll introduce myself, Starion. Lead the way, Starion. And I've made my first companion. 
try to lockpick that door. But I don't have a lockpick, so that's not gonna. So, whoops, and I got myself into the door. All right, uh, let's see if this fine gentleman has something of use, but he doesn't. Uh, so let's continue, see where we end up. More of those wretched things. Oops. So that's usually an introduction to combat when you see something like that. So let's try uh, and see what that is. Oh yeah, this is. So combat is turn-based because Dungeons and Dragons is a turn-based system. So we base ourselves on that. I need to be ca very careful for these uh, intellect divorce because if they get too close to me, it will be very painful. Uh, this can actually end up in a party wipe, but I'll do my very best not to let that happen. I'm going to seek the high ground in Dungeons and Dragons. Seeking advantage allows you to roll twice, which is a good idea because there's a lot of dice rolling going on behind the scenes. Uh, as you'll soon see. Uh, we translate the dice rolls into percentages so that you don't have to do all the mathematics yourself. So this gives me a 90% chance to hit, so that's a pretty good one. Also... Uh, uh, I'll, I'll manage, don't worry about it. That's a 45%, that's not so good. Uh, but let's try. Uh, I'm casting sacred fire, let's see what that goes. To puny two damage. Uh, so if you're curious to know how the calculations are going happening, they're happening behind the scenes here. You can just hover over it and then you can learn all of the um, the math behind the numbers that you see, which is why Jesse said lots of numbers. Um, we're going to be very brave and we're just going to go up there. Um, and then I'm going to see how far I can get the star in because I don't want him to die right away. All right, Shadowheart. Well, she's not really me, she's just my recruit, so... Cast shield of faith of her. The bonus actions, these are my actions, these are my bonus actions. You just see, yeah, it says AP, it's a little bit misleading, uh, but it's actually just the actions that you have. Uh, but sometimes you can have two of them. Uh, so, I'm going to end my turn, and now it's the enemy's turn. Let's see what they do. Unfortunately, they can jump, so that's good. That's actually not that bad. Uh, so what I'm going to do with Shadow Heart is I'm going to try something that's a little bit risky, but sometimes works. Uh, I'm going to use Shove, and I'm going to try to... Oh, it's going to work. Yeah, there you go. So that guy is a little bit further from me, and then uh, she can still hammer at that guy. Really not hitting very well. Uh, and then I'm going to shoot with a star at that guy. So yeah, we're doing pretty good, actually. Ooh. Ooh. So, combat is fairly high stakes, as you can see. <laughs> um, so, they have a reaction, so that basically means if she walks away from here, they're going to hit her, which is not good. Um, so, what I'm going to do, and he, and he can't walk. Yeah. Uh, so, I have a jump. I didn't want to use it yet. Uh, but first I'm going to, oh man, uh, let's jump as a bonus action in VG3. So that means that I can't use another bonus action, but it acts as a disengage also. And it's enhanced by my death pole that I have in, inside of me. Uh, I do have one action that I can still do. So I'm just going to try it out. This is my mage hand. My mage hand is bad at many things, but it's very good at throwing stuff. Uh, so I'm going to... Just slap it. There you go. Uh, I wanted to show this to you today, but you have no idea how nervous I was about doing it because I was going to get in this situation. So I obviously should have approached them in a completely different manner. We'll see in the next combat how you can actually be much more strategic. I mean, famous last words, I guess, but uh, we'll see. All right. Um, she is hurting, so she's going to drink my first healing potion. I don't have a lot of them. Then she's just gonna. Well, actually, I don't want to use it up. Uh, just smack it like this. Maybe I'll get lucky. Okay, uh, all right. Well, can I run even further? No. <laughs> all right. Let's, here it comes. That's good. Oh no 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 no. And it's getting back up. Very high stakes. Um, he's hiding for the shot. That's interesting. 
Okay. Um, Mage Hand, where are you? Do your thing. It's 80%. So, sorry. Yeah, you can also throw uh, bodies that you find in the world, but it's not working. So that's why I'm using the shove, actually. I mean, it's working, but it doesn't look as good. Oh, why did I go to sneak? I misclicked. Really, did I put my hand into sneak? That's really clever. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, okay, so... Yeah, the, the, the announcement was that it was going to be live, I think, so there you go. All right, 90% shot. That should, oh, yeah, actually, I have a pin-down attack, which is a uh, action that you get with your weapon. So each weapon that you get gives you an extra type of action. Uh, yes, you're, I know that you're sneaking. Um, hey, come on. <laughs> Right. <laughs> you got this. You got this. Uh, hold on. I, I have a plan. I have a plan. I got a bottle with grease, so I'm just going to Can you stop hand? And I normally he's not supposed to be able to hit like this. Actually, can you can't you do anything useful? If, if they want to attack you, maybe. Oh. Oh, they killed. No, they didn't kill hand. Okay. All right. So, oh, they did kill hand. Yeah, hand is not supposed to die, but um well, it's going swimmingly. Okay, so I wanted to throw... Um, so I have a throw action. I can throw pretty much everything. In a presentation I did previously, I threw my boots. Uh, so for comedial effect, I'll just throw my boots. Maybe I'll actually just kill him. Oh, that's it. Good work, good work. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> that's not that bad, actually. Um, so, where is she? Hey, oops, she doesn't want to close anymore. You want to keep on throwing? No, it's entered, yeah. Please close. That's, so, she's down, she's not dead yet. So, that's the good news. Um, so, basically how this works is, uh, this is death saving throw, so... Uh, each turn, uh, there's going to be a roll behind the scenes, and if it's a good roll, uh, then we're going to get a little blue spot like this, and if we have three of them, she gets stabilized, which is cool. And if we get three red ones, because it's a bad roll, then she dies. And uh, they are going to keep on hitting at her, because if she goes to the negative of her, ma of her maximum HP, she dies too. So uh, we're going to try to avoid that from happening. Uh, but I'm really not in Okay, so... I shouldn't have thrown the boost, by the way. That was a really stupid move. Um, this looks like a really good hit. Good. Excellent. And we have one guy left. Uh, thank you. Uh, why? Uh -huh. Okay, well, let's hope that this one is going to go right. I did tell you that... Oh, stand up, stand up, no, stand up. Hold on, does this work? Uh, I, I was too late. All right, so, so I do have... The save game problem is real, so... <laughs> it is genuine, so I need to restart. So I'm just going to do a quick restart. I'll just do it as fast, and then we'll just... We'll do Q&A for five minutes. <laughs> uh, you got it out of the way early. Yeah, that's why they gave us a half hour extra, Jesse. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> You're fine. I'll, uh, I'll just...